Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. A Moon Knight Before Christmas wasn't exactly what I was expecting. And I mean that both positively and negatively. Positively in that it wasn't half bad and featured a fun but ultimately bizarre take on the Moon Knight character, and negatively because it showed me that for all Drake Bell's flaws as the voice of Spider-Man, there can always be worse voice acting than his. Let's tackle those one by one, starting with Moon Knight. Although I'm not as fluent in Moon Knight's history as others, I do know enough about the character that I thought it was almost fitting he be voiced by none other than Diedrich Bader, who also voiced Batman on The Brave and the Bold. I am a little sad we didn't get to see a more serious take on Spectre and Khonshu, as that's been an incredible dynamic within his comic book series, but I did at least find it to be pretty funny as his craziness bounced off of Spidey's well. You talking to the moon again? Of course. Isn't that who you're talking to? No. No one talks to the moon. The moon doesn't talk. Well, if you are not talking to the moon, then who are you talking to? Uh, no one. Weirdo. Anything that involved Moon Knight and Spider-Man was easily the best part of the episode. It's when the plot turns and focuses on Frances Beck and her father, the former Mysterio, that I got a little soured on the events. While I did enjoy the concept of Mysterio's daughter appearing to carry on his legacy, something explored often in superhero fiction, and I personally believe she was at least partially inspired by another Mysterio, Francis Klum, a lot of the drama and heart surrounding the story was deflated by a lackluster performance by Mary Wiles and Paul Shear, the voices of Francis and Quentin Beck, respectively. Now, I'm not familiar with either of them, but just from a cursory glance at Wikipedia, both seem to be talented enough actors, or at least have been in some noteworthy things. But in this instance, I don't think they had much business portraying these two characters because they did really bad. And I mean that. Sure, I often take shots at Drake Bell's performance as Spidey, but it's ten times better than these other two actors. I'm shocked the show even signed off on their takes as the final ones. Maybe they did even worse, though I can't imagine how. The thing with animation is it's not just a pure visual medium, it also needs talented voices breathing life into the characters. Without that, you get a lesser product. And in this case, it was hard to take anything seriously when every single line delivered by Mysterio and his daughter sounded terrible. Their awful deliveries ruined this moment here, which is meant to be heartfelt, but instead fell flat. Can't go back. My soul is lost. Dad, no! I love you too much to lose you again! Luckily, the rest of the episode isn't as bad and managed to be relatively fun. I will say this, though. Having this episode be the first appearance of this show's version of Mysterio also helped to take some of the wind out of the plot as well. There's no real connection or relationship between Spidey and his foe when the episode treats it as if they've fought a number of times. It feels like another instance where a classic villain or just an element of the Spider-Man mythos is crammed into the season because the writers know the show is almost over, thus not allowing for any kind of build-up. That's my review. If you're a fan of Moon Knight, I'd highly recommend you give this a watch as it contains a pretty fun interpretation of the character, but you also wouldn't be missing out on too much if you just skipped this one and eagerly waited for today's final two episodes, which will either send the series out with a bang or a whimper. I'm sure it'll be some awful mix of the two. For more Ultimate Spider-Man reviews, click here to the left, or you can watch my first look at the newest Resident Evil movie here on the right. Thanks for watching and take care.